All right, guys, this is the video for unit two, the first video for unit two. This is linear relations equations. Okay. So before we start um, some lessons, there's a couple of things we want to remind you guys about or review um, since it may have slipped your mind since the last time you saw it. So let's talk about inverse operations. Inverse operations are operations that are opposite of each other. So they... Um, and I'm going to add, I know there's only two lines here, but I'm going to add some stuff in here. These are operations that undo, cancel out, or zero out, because that's kind of what we're going to be talking about the most. Zero out each other. Okay? So with addition, remember addition is just the plus sign, right? So this might look something like some number plus another number, obviously. Okay? Now the opposite or the inverse of addition is subtraction. Subtraction is what undoes addition, and that's just with a little subtraction key, and vice versa. So the opposite of, a, of subtraction is addition, right? They go back and forth. So then if this one's A plus B, this one would be B minus A, okay? So then let's talk about multiplication. So multiplication is the one, obviously, with the little... Um, um, <laughs> the X, sometimes we can see it with just a dot, okay? And sometimes multiplication, if, it's, if we're talking about a variable, it's just a number next to a variable. So something like 7X, this means multiplication, okay? So don't forget that. So, um, oh, so we're looking at something like A times B. So I'm just using the dot just so that we don't think that's a variable in there. Okay, so A times B. And then the opposite or the inverse or what undoes multiplication is division. Okay, and division has a lot of its own unique little things, um, symbols. Sometimes we see it like that. Sometimes it can be a fraction, right? N over D is a division problem. Or even sometimes we see it like the slash, right? Like that, N divided by D. <clears throat> So if we've got A times B, then to undo it, it would be B divided by A. Okay? So these are all the different ways you can see it written. Okay. And then this is a new one that we just learned. I don't know if some of you guys are familiar with it. Or, I mean, we're familiar with it before we did it, but squaring a number. So remember, so if it has the little square, the little 2 raised to the top like that, Okay, to undo a square, we would do the square root. It undoes it, or is the opposite, the inverse of it. And that would, so if this is a squared, then to undo it, we would take the square root of a squared. Okay, so these are the inverses of each other. So if you're never, if you see something like a minus b, or let's say x minus 7, and you're not sure how to get rid of that, then you can just come here and kind of find where the, the inverse is at, and then you can work backwards from there, okay? So let's recognize some of these. Sometimes we don't quite recognize them when we see them kind of written different ways. So addition, we're really familiar with something like this. Okay, x plus 3. We know that that's addition. But sometimes what you may not realize is that this is also x plus 3. Okay, there's no plus sign here in front of the 3, but this is the same thing. Okay, so if there's a number in front by itself like this, this is still x plus 3. These two are the same thing. They're just written differently. Okay, <clears throat> another one is subtraction. That one's a big one that sometimes people don't recognize. So x minus 3, really easy to recognize, right? The subtraction sign's in there. We know that we're taking 3 away from x. But what we sometimes don't realize is that this is exactly the same as that one up there. Negative three plus x is the same as x minus three. Okay, these are the exact same things. So a term with a negative sign in front is the same as a subtraction. Okay. And then multiplication is another one that sometimes people are not really recognizing. So if we're given something like 7 times 8, okay, we know that that's multiplication. Or even we're for pretty familiar with like the dot in the middle, right? That's multiplication as well. But what some people and students, especially um, ones that aren't, haven't been dealing with it a lot, what they fail to recognize is that this right here is a multiplication problem. This is 7 times x. Or say, um, 
8 y okay this is 8 times y this is a multiplication problem when you've got a coefficient so that's a coefficient the number in front of a variable it means that they're multiplying together okay so a number next to a variable is another way to recognize multiplication oops I should learn how to spell variable that's an a okay all right, so now that we can recognize, or now that we know the inverse operations and we can recognize some kind of hidden addition, subtraction, and multiplication problems, let's talk about distributing, okay? So we're gonna do some distributing properties today. This should be review, you guys, okay? It's nothing new. Um, you did this all the way back in probably fifth grade, but definitely sixth grade and seventh grade. Okay, so but just as a quick reminder, let's talk about some stuff. So if there are parentheses, right, you will need to distribute. Now, distribute means to multiply. Okay? So if there is not a number outside the parentheses, then what we want to do is write in the number one. Okay, so look right here, and we're gonna rewrite this again. It's just our notes are kind of mixed up, but see how there's no number out here, but there is this negative sign out here? We wanna write a one in there, okay, if there's no number. If there's a number, we just leave it. So for example, if we had three X plus seven like that, then there's a number and we don't need to write the one. Okay, but if for some reason we've got a negative sign out there, but no number, we're gonna put the one in there. We're gonna manually write that one in there, okay. If there is a negative before the number, that's my number symbol, you're gonna need to include it when you multiply. And I'm gonna, this is, I was just gonna put the multiplication symbol there, but I don't like that. So let's write in multiply. Because then it looks like X. So multiply. And you can squeeze that in there on that line if you want to. Okay, so <clears throat> for example, if we had this, Okay, we wouldn't just distribute that seven, we would distribute the negative seven all the way through. Okay, so let's do some practice here. All right, so if there is not a number outside the parentheses, we're gonna put a one in front. So we did that already, we put the one in front. Okay, so then I'm just gonna kinda carry this down. I should have just left this whole box open, but I didn't. Okay, so then from there, what we're gonna do is we're going to we're gonna circle the number and the negative sign directly in front of the parentheses, like that. So I'm gonna do all the steps in the new color now, and I'll just keep rewriting this as I go. Okay, so we've got that circled. Oh, that should already be circled. The new step now is to draw arrows to show the terms being multiplied. So for example, I'm multiplying everything inside the parentheses, okay? So not just the first term. So negative one is going to multiply times X and negative one is going to multiply times the positive five, okay? <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna multiply each term inside the parentheses by the number on the outside of the parentheses. This is the number that should have been circled. So we just kind of showed the arrow. So now I'm gonna actually do that work. So I've got negative one times X and negative one times a positive five. Okay, so when I put these together, I get a negative one X and technically we don't write the one. So technically this isn't just negative X, but you can keep the one there if you're comfortable with it. And then negative one times five is a negative five. Okay, so that goes down that way and that goes down to that. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to take these new answers that we got. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take these answers and you can take this one or this one, it doesn't matter which one. So I'm gonna take the most correct one. This one is most correct, but you can take that one if you're more comfortable with it. Okay, I'm just gonna put those down there. And then what step five tells us to do is this, is that you're going to put a plus sign between each term. So I'm gonna do like that. But then what I need to do is I need to remember that a negative will always overpower a, a plus sign. 
So this negative takes over this and becomes a subtraction. So this actually becomes negative x minus 5 instead of negative x plus a negative 5. Now, either one of these is correct. This one is just more correct. This is the most correct version. Now, you could have something like this as well. Like if I picked this, negative 1x plus negative 5. Or you could even have negative 1x minus 5. Any of these answers are correct. It's just that this one right here is the most correct form. Okay, and we're going to be asking you to put things in the most correct form on Canvas. And if you put them in any of these other forms, it'll mark it wrong. And I'll have to manually go in and fix it for you. So try to put it in the most correct form you can every time. Okay, so we're going to try a few. I'm actually going to do one of these with you. And then you guys are going to do the other two. Make sure I see them. Okay, so this one is negative 2 times x minus 6. So I don't. I don't need, I have a number here, so I don't need to put a one in front. I'm going to circle the negative and the number that's in front. That's step two. Step three, I'm going to draw arrows to show what's being multiplied. So negative two times x and negative two times, and this is a negative six, you guys. That sign always stays with it, whatever sign's in front. Even though we say x minus six, it's still a negative six, okay? Now I'm going to actually do it. So I've got negative 2 times x and negative 2 times negative 6. Okay, negative 2 times x is negative 2x and negative 2 times negative 6 is a positive 12. <clears throat> so this came down here like that and that one came down there like that. Then I'm going to put a plus sign in between each term. And I, this one doesn't have a negative in front of it, so that plus sign stays. And this is the most correct form. Okay? So you'll do these two over here. And then, oh, actually, yes, do these two. Okay, and we're going to do a couple more over here in the, where am I at? My pages are so confusing right now. Nope, that's it. That's all. Yeah, because the next thing is 2.1. Okay, sorry, good. That's it. Try those two and then you're done. Thanks, guys.